Welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh and this is Luna. It's Luna. Mm, she does not want to be here right now. Anyway, that was Luna. Welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. Snarkmas Day 7, I think it is. People have been waiting for this one. So Kira dropped the bomb, okay? And it's, it is what you think and it's not what you think. And it's like, what? What the hell just happened? So we're going to look at that and we're going to look at what she threw away. And it's going to be real sad, but we're going to snark on Kira. But it's also going to be like, oh man, because kids are involved. But also look at the sweet sweater. <laughs> and also we got to spin the old wheel and do a little dance uh, because every day this month during Starkmas, I'm going to be giving away a prize. So let's do that right now. Yeah, baby. Sharni! Sharni wins a prize. Reach out to me, Josh, at the thedadchallengepodcast.com with your shirt size and your address, and I will hook you up. Congratulations. Let's go. So if you're new to the OK Baby saga, oh my God. Okay, like it's it's involved. So a little while ago, I think it was like, I don't know, they say in March, I don't know when they did it, something like that. Kira and Oscar sat down on their OK Baby channel and they said, we're breaking up. And it went pretty viral. Actually. So they deleted, okay, well, they deleted the breakup video, but they did uh, OK Baby's coming to an end video four months ago. And it was where Kira was bawling her eyes out, crying her brains out because the channel's over. But she didn't cry like that when they were breaking up the family. It was pretty crazy. So they've been together for lots of years. They have four children together. They were not married. They were engaged. And they had a nanny named Hannah. Hannah Hawker. And Hannah Hawker became close friends with the family. And Hannah Hawker and Kira started a podcast called Beneath the Sheets, which was like sex. Straight up unadulterated white girl drunk sex podcast. They would drink a lot and they talk about sex like they knew they, they were doing. Just because you've done it before doesn't mean you should be talking about it. And it was terrible, okay? It was, like, very much oversharing. And a lot came out in that. They've, they've since deleted the podcast. So, anyway, after that whole thing, I had somebody reach out to me from Vegas. And this girl was like, hey, just so you're aware, here's some proof that Preston and Kira approached me for a threesome. And it was like, boom, bomb drop, right? And she gave me a photo that no one else had with her and Preston hanging out at the little thing by the hotel or whatever and so what they've been doing is they've been traveling around looking for threesomes now the conjecture is that they engage in threesomes with hannah kira and preston and this and, and based on my sources interpretation of the conversation Pe preston and kira said they have been together for 10 months from that point and that was in april and so Kira has not has stayed mum on it, stayed silent on the whole thing about Preston the whole time because she knows that she comes out and says that she did it. People are going to call her a home wrecker because she's basically a home wrecker for all intents and purposes. But don't forget that Preston's also a damned home wrecker. Okay, Preston was married to Hannah in 2020 at a very very exclusive wedding, very small, lot of, like I think it was at the, the courthouse. It wasn't a big wedding, and they were probably saving it up for a party later on. So either that got annulled or they got a full divorce, but I'm not sure if it was less than a year, it was probably annulled, I think is how that works. And so Hannah goes radio silent on the whole thing. She doesn't make a comment except to say a couple things on her posts. And you can find all this stuff at, at uh, Reddit. You can go over to Reddit, Kira Renee Severtson, Severtson, and there's a, it's a snark thread. And you can go here and there's tons and tons and tons of stuff on here. Like there's evidence and proof. And so she's been keeping silent on the whole thing. And all the while people are just like, Digging in and trying to find it. And people are like, why are you silent? You've given your whole life away, all the privacy of your children, all your stories of since you're like a teenager. All of a sudden, when this happens, you stay silent on it, right? Why? What's the reason? Well, it's because she knows that what she did is wrong, right? She knows what, and Preston knows what he did is wrong. But she's trying to hold on to that last grip of her like social media power, right? So she can make a little bit more money so that she can, I don't know, 
I don't know, retire? I don't know. They sold their home, not for as much as they, absolutely not for as much as they thought they were going to sell it for. She had a big chunk of money. Recently, she's done a big spending spree. And then just kind of went silent on the whole thing. She put up like five stockings, and then there were six stockings, and then she just gives hints here and there, and all this kind of stuff, and liking posts like what daddy wants, daddy gets, and liking that type of post, which is what my which was what my source said was the thing that she said, what daddy wants, daddy gets. And that became like a big inside joke, but it's exactly what she said. But she never came out and said she wasn't dating Preston. We all knew it, but there are actually people in the Reddit and everywhere else saying maybe they're not because she came out and said, maybe I'm not. And she laughed at a joke about someone asking her, what if it's not Preston? And I told you from, the, from day one, 100% certainty it was Preston. And I've said that because I trust my sources. All that leads up to the today where people were like, oh my God, Josh, you run. Don't walk to Kira's stories, okay? But here we go. Hear me out for a second. Yes, we all knew Kira was dating Preston. But oh my God, why is no one talking about this? <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but back when I was pregnant with Levi, so like five years ago, oh my God, seven, eight years ago. When yeah, you got the ages wrong three times. That's good. Good mom. Ding. What am I saying? I had my car broken into and my wallet was stolen and my driver's license was in it. So I have not had a driver's license since then. I've basically just been using a passport ID and a passport like card. No. Okay, guys. I know no one's talking about Why is no one talking about this? This woman has been driving without a license for eight years. All you have to do is like, I'm pretty sure you just have to go in and do another photo. Maybe if not, or just order a new one if you've lost it. Eight years she's been driving without a license. But that's, I, like, guys, I get it. I, I, we know that the Preston thing's coming up. We get it. But this is a scandal, too. Don't overlook this. Something tells me she dropped this little T-bomb before she dropped the other bomb because something happened. Right? I get it. Hold on. I know. I know. You guys want me to get to the T? I'll get to it. As my form of identification when I travel and stuff or buy my wine and buy my wine. Here's my passport. Um, today, <laughs> I'm finally at the DMV to get my license. I'm kind of nervous. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a good test taker. See, there it is, everybody. What? You don't need to take a new test to re to get your license, right? Or even renew it. If you've got your full license, even if you're in a graduated system like we are here in Ontario or anywhere else, a lot of people have graduated systems, right? You already have your full license. All you have to do is apply for it again. What do you mean you lost your license? She's not telling us something here. And she's been driving illegally, by the way. Plus, this is Utah, not California. And the last driving test I took was like the California rules. Why are you taking a driver's test? What are we? What is she not saying, guys? Although I don't think they're that different. Um, but oh my God, you guys, I'm so nervous. If I fail, I want, I'm not even going to post this if I fail. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you taking a driver's test? Aren't you like 28 or something? Now, if you're wondering, like, how can I not have a driver's yeah, license? Yeah, I'm wondering. I have been pulled over once, like, five years ago. Yeah. And it wasn't, I was driving somebody else's car and they had a... So this is three years after you lost your license, you got pulled over. Okay. We're eight years. She hasn't had a license and she's been driving around. Headlight out and I got pulled over and they were able to look up my driver's license. So yeah. It's not like because I didn't have, like, a card. I haven't yeah. had a license Yeah, okay, fine. All. I still had one. I just didn't... How does it take you eight years to not just get a replacement license? I'm sure you got replacement bank cards, everything else you needed. What are we missing? Because you don't need to take a test to, to get your license or even renew it. What is... Why... What is she not saying? The physical car. Is someone, like, about to drop some kind of thing or she got pulled over for DUI or something? Is someone threatening to drop some tea that she needs to get ahead of? That's the only thing I can think of. What? Why is she lying about this? And This is a scandal, everybody. Because she drives illegally with her kids everywhere. The reason why now I'm like, okay, I better get one is because that driver's license expired. Like, literally, now I actually do not have a driver's license. So Yeah, it expired probably three, four years ago depending on when you got your license. But it doesn't mean you have to take your test again. You just renew it. Am I going crazy? What? What? Time to be a responsible adult. Oh, eight years after. Okay, good. Little delayed there, responsible adult. Time to be a responsible adult. You know what's not responsible? Being a mom and going to Vegas for threesomes. You could be murdered, okay? That's a dangerous place and dangerous lifestyle to be living. Okay, so here's the post. Okay, the last slide was filmed earlier this AM. After I went in, they said I needed a form I didn't have. Surprise, surprise. So still no driver's license. Notice how she's in a car, though, right? 
unless Preston's driving and someone caught a picture of them driving or something like that. Preston might be driving them around, so she has to come out with it. And a lot of frustration. And a lot of frustrating. Try again next week once I can get the right form from a different office. Next week. You can just get the form there? What? Something is not right, everybody. That You tell me the DMV doesn't have the form that you need? What? I'm not letting this go, everybody. This is crazy. I'm not going to lie. It's been a rough past few days. My computer has been giving me every problem in the book. Is there a book on that? Okay. I filmed three videos where the lighting is just effed up and almost unusable. Still going to upload because I put a ton of work into them and I'm not... And I'm sick of not uploading because of things like this. You're, I mean, I think what she said was there's a video of her and her brother drinking beers, and it's, it is bullshit. It's like terrible lighting. Now you can tell that Oscar did all the work. Hate comments are exhausting, and she spelled exhausting wrong. Exhausting. As always, and even more frustrating. <laughs> frustrating. She spelled that wrong, too. When I'm excited to put content out there and get shit on as soon as I post. Well, I think you get shit on because you're a bad person. That's probably what it is. Yeah? Maybe that, maybe not that you're posting content, that you're just a shitty person. Okay. Missing my kids so much after having them for nearly three weeks and then having time without, and then having time without them. We all have these days, but damn, it's coming down heavy today. There isn't always with wings for that. Let's make this clear. Drama channels ready? Oh, I'm ready. I'm not really a drama channel, but I guess sort of, I dabble. I did not cheat on Oscar. Ah, I think Oscar begs to differ. We had a ton of problems behind the scenes and had, a f and had a few times prior to this that we almost broke up, which also includes him leaving me. He left you, okay? Preston did not leave Hannah for me. Well, we'll see about that in a second. I'm still friends with Winter. I don't know who that is. I should have been a better friend to Karen, but unfortunately wasn't the best at communication or understanding the value of friendships at the time. Alyssa and I grew apart. I have no idea who these people are. Okay, Hannah and I are no longer friends, although I truly love her and I think she's one of the best people to ever walk this planet, which means that Hannah left your ass and said F you to you because you stole her husband. Are you serious? My breakup video is a very, very hard video for me because I was trying to cover all the emotions I was feeling by not feeling and laughing by doing so. It apparently, oh my God, periods, commas, punctuation, please. My breakup video is a very hard video for me because I was trying to cover all the emotions I was feeling by not feeling and laughing by doing it. So I was being heartless and truthfully just overall horrible, which I do 100% believe is not accurate representation of my character. And I'm sorry for those of you that are hurt. Seriously, just a comma periods anywhere, anywhere, anything, nothing. Okay. Basically what she said there is I'm, you know, in the video, it wasn't me. We don't believe you. It was you. Also, who are you apologizing to? Who would have hurt? It would have hurt Oscar only and Hannah because you broke up their marriage. Apologize to your kids. Those are the only people you need to apologize to. Who are you apologizing to on the internet? Who are you apologizing to? I am dating Preston. Here he goes. Ready? I am dating Preston, and we have been seeing each other since March of this year. Sometimes friends that are there for you in tough situations turn into more. Oh, is that what happened? Remember, if you go back to the video where Oscar's out, to, he basically spills that she was there for somebody in a way that was inappropriate, right? Just saying, if Hannah and Preston were going through some shit, it sounds like Kira might have been there for him, oh, around 10 months before the divorce. Do you know what I'm saying? You hear him, you hear him getting out, you, th you get what I'm throwing out at you? So Oscar admits it, and she also sort of admits it, and then she said, you know, sometimes friends that are there for you in tough situations turn into people you go have threesomes with in Vegas? I mean, wow, I gotta be real careful then who I ask... <laughs> If sometimes I'll call my best friend Mark and I'll be like, Mark, I'm going through the shit. Or he'll call me and he's like, dude, I'm going through the shit. And we are there for each other. We talk to each other. We are literally ride or dies. Anything he's going through, I'm there for the advice or I'll call him if I need a, if I need a word. Okay. We're not going to go to Vegas and do threesomes with other people. Okay. That's just, that's silly. Okay. That's silly. That's so stupid. What a dumb excuse. So because he was there for you during your hard time, you literally slept with him. Okay. That makes sense. Here's a big thanks, my cooch. I will not share details of my dating life currently online because although I owe you guys explanations, my content is about my kids and Oscar and I. Is it? What? No, you said your content's about you. Your channel's called Kira Renee. And I think Preston probably plays a role in Kira Renee, right? Could I be, I could be wrong. Being vulnerable online is not what it used to be, and sharing my dating and mental health is not something I feel the safest doing at this point in my life. 
cool. I can respect that. Not to say I never will, but just speaking in the present. So, I mean, you just literally dropped the whole bomb that you're dating Preston. So, you, I can't believe she didn't turn this into a video. It would have been a million views on it. It would have went viral. So, I don't know why she didn't. I don't know if something's going on with her and Preston. I don't know. But she's like, you know, she's been vulnerable online. She's told you all the stories. She cried because the channel was done. All of a sudden, when it comes to Preston, she's like, hands off. I'm not telling you guys anything. But she's willing to give you away the privacy of her family for the last, what, eight to ten years on the internet? But as soon as Preston comes in the picture, no, you guys don't get anything. It's so weird. I'm sorry for those I've hurt truthfully. Okay? <laughs> she tries to put commas in punctuation, but it doesn't work. I'm sorry I've tried... I'm sorry for those I've hurt truthfully. You've hurt people truthfully? I don't get it. Okay. I've grown and learned a lot as any 25, 26-year-old would. I don't regret most of my choices. But there are some I wish I handled better online. That's called regretting your choices. Okay, whatever. Thank you for those that have supported it. Thank you for those that's thank you for those who have supported. It really doesn't go unnoticed. It just sometimes really hurts to see the wrong and mean and it comes off louder. What? It sometimes really hurts to see the wrong and mean and it comes off louder. I nope, I got nothing. No idea. Okay. Now can we, now listen to this, everybody. Now, can we please move on? It's been a year and I think everyone's hearts involved are very much ready. No, you don't speak for everybody else. I'm, you know, Hannah hasn't said anything. Oscar really hasn't thrown you under the bus. It's just you, Kira. It's just you. Can we move on? Are you kidding me? What you've done to, and you're like out there influencing people? No. You put your life on the internet. This is what happens. Let this be a lesson to those people out there who are dumb who do this. That this is what you're eventually going to get. You're venturing into drama channels, commentary channels, everybody talking about you because you put that shit online. This is on you. Then you made shit ass choices, literally broke up a marriage and your family for strange taint and Preston and are lying about it, by the way, because let's take a look, shall we? On the Kira Renee Sivertson page, Preston filed for divorce from Hannah in April 2022, and it was finalized in June 2022. She's lying if she said he didn't leave Hannah for her. How could they have been dating in March when he wasn't even divorced yet? And he wasn't even divorced till the month after, right? So it sounds like they were like helping each other for the past few months. Know what I'm saying? So there's the, there's the divorce. I think it's a dissolution. Mm. Annulment. It's an annulment. Comments are like, Preston seems like a shit person just like Kira. They belong together. Not going to lie. He deactivated all social medias because he knows he's dirty and ran through. Boom burn. I thought Hannah and Preston were just engaged, not actually married. Now, I've been telling everybody forever, they were married in 2020. Why doesn't anybody believe me? I don't lie. Sometimes I get shit wrong, but I'm not lying. Now that Kira admitted it, she's going to say he didn't leave Hannah for her. Everyone knows that's such a lie. First, you break up with the man then you has with four kids with. Then all of a sudden, your best friend and husband break up, and now you're dating him? Mm, why lie? One interesting thing to say, someone here says, Hannah was in Kira's apartment when she left the family home. There was a vlog about it. How messed up would it be that Hannah was venting to Kira about her relationship issues, and Kira was, like, listening. But if my source is correct, and I... Unless that Kira and Preston were lying for whatever reason. I don't understand why they would lie about it. They were dating way before this. So if Kira went over to Hannah's during this Nazi breakup, and it's true that Kira was with Preston before that, oh my God. Right? Kira, why you lie? Why you lying? If you got together in March and he wasn't even, the, the divorce wasn't even filed until April and wasn't even finalized till June. I mean, what's going on there? Right? Is the divorce because of what you and Kira did? Likely. That's what I'm thinking. What else could it be? Hannah's not saying anything. Kira's just making bullshit lies up. Preston doesn't even exist on the internet anymore. Oscar doesn't want to throw them under the bus like he probably knows now, though. Right? But at its core, don't forget, everybody, right at the middle of this are all their kids. What a shit person Kira ended up being, right? Then she says, it's 140, but I'm done. Ready for Christmas movies until my babies get back home. Hmm. We're sorry for you. No, we're not. You don't know. Sorry, Kira. What did you think was going to happen? People are going to be like, oh, all good. You just ruined families and other marriages. Oh, good. We forgive you. Again, you don't need to forgiveness from anybody except for the people that you hurt. And it doesn't look like she's seeking that. What's on your chin? <clears throat> and then she continues. I didn't leave Oscar because he was a bad person. He was and is such an amazing individual. We are just on different pages in life. And it makes me so happy to see him fully living his best life, which I hands down know he wouldn't have been able to do with me. That's silly. 
It's giving, it's not you, it's me energy, right? Gross. That's, that's gaslighting, by the way. I know it seems obvious, but don't forget the internet is just that, the internet. What? Okay. So what? Just because it's the internet, you didn't do the shitty things you did? Eh, well, I don't believe you. And then the next slide is, P.S. Finally got my sex chocolates in the mail. What? She knew people were going to go bananas after she posted that shit. And then she's like, here's the sex chocolates. The hell? And she's like, hey, have you tried this? <laughs> what do you think? And this is, I'll be here. And I'm pretty sure that's for Preston, maybe. Maybe they're arguing. And maybe she, he's like, look, you got to come out with it all. Or I'm done. Right? I don't know. Maybe he's like, I'm tired of hiding. I don't know. And then this was her way. He probably gave her an ultimatum, maybe. Is what, here's my conjecture. He gave her an ultimatum and said, look, you figure this shit out or I'm done. So she posted all this shit after thinking about it, crying about it, blah, blah, blah. And then wrote this for him. I said what you needed me to say. I put it all on the internet. I'll be here with my Apple remote. That's probably a Gen 2 or something. Nice. So there it is, everybody. Kira finally admits to everything we already knew. But not the damn driving without your damn license. Are you serious? You idiot. What an idiot. You just admitted that you literally drive illegally and have been for the past eight years. But I'm still confused. Why do you need to go get a driver's test? Somebody tell me. Maybe I'm missing something. It might be different in your states. But she's definitely not making any money on the internet anymore. Like, I don't think. If you take a look at her social blade. Past 30 days has not gained a subscriber. She lost 1,000 subscribers here in the middle of the month of November and is literally at 530,000 views a month, which is not terrible. It's less than, I'd say, under $7,000 a month, which to a lot of people is a lot of money. Not for her, not the lifestyle they've been living. But don't forget, they just sold the house. And so she's got a big nest egg somewhere. Maybe she's got investments. I don't know. Preston might be having, Preston might have a job now, might be making money. I don't know. Because he's in the financial industry, so probably makes good money. Maybe she's going to be like, he's going to be my sugar daddy and they're going to get married to Preston. My thing was, and I put my tinfoil hat on, maybe she's pregnant and she's got to tell everybody that she's, you know, maybe she's got to tell everybody. I don't know. I have no idea. But she's, her channel is just flailing, falling to shreds. Nobody wants to watch her shit. Because she's who she is. Look, people want to watch people who are decent, right? Which is why I don't know why people watch family vloggers. Because they're not decent. But they put the front on like they are decent, right? At least they fake it really well. People like her, don't you can't fake it. She's been called out because of my anonymous source in Vegas. Basically broke this whole shit wide open. That's it. That's what happened. People then finally realized what type of person Kira was. And realize it wasn't really Oscar at all. And she even admits it in her story there. So everybody's going to come at me like, Oscar did stuff too. I'm sure he did. But she just admitted to you there. It wasn't Oscar. It was me. And he couldn't have lived his dream unless I left his ass. Which is such a silly, dumb way to gaslight somebody. Okay? So don't come at me with that stupid bullshit. Because leading into that was this video. This is what Kira left for Strange Taint. Was she left with a, from a successful channel? Which I'm kind of glad happened, to be honest with you. But what she left is like life. This is what she left. The Oscar's going away, packing his house that they sold for less than they, they wanted to sell it for. And Oscar in this whole thing, you got to be real. Even Kira's got to be real about this. They haven't thrown each other under the bus at all. Not at all. And that just means that they love their kids and you got to give them credit for that. Sometime in 2018, I bought my forever home. Oh. Unfortunately, I, Oscar's a great editor, man. He makes great films. Well, this is it. Today is officially my last day as the owner of this beautiful seven bedroom. He's using a mic, shotgun mic. That's what people should learn to do. Dream house. I'm just lucky I got to own something like this. Like It's crazy, seven bedrooms in that house. At my age, to be able to do something like that is just, Incredible, and the universe has been way too kind to me. I truly, I truly do deserve it. I'm glad I got to experience it, though. It was you hear what he said there? I truly didn't deserve this. People on YouTube, when they get lucky and they hit big, right? And if you go to their channel, okay, baby, if you look at their view counts, they made 531 million views. They made eight figures on this channel easily. And what do they have to show for it? Nothing. They sold everything, split it up. Thanks to you guys. Let's say our official advice. We got the key! Welcome to my 
I imagine Kira watched this video and probably bawling her freaking eyeballs out, right? Because of which, again, I'm showing you this, guys, because it's an important video to show you kind of the reality of behind the scenes of family vlogging. Like, you guys, you got to stop watching it and enabling these people. It's all built on a foundation of absolute lies and deception. And the, and the dangerous thing, and I've said this from the beginning, is that you guys often compare yourselves to these people or want to stack up to that, and you can't do it. It just leaves people wanting. Social media in general with influencer culture is some of the most toxic human behavior we've ever seen. And it's only getting worse. <laughs> oh, it is an upstairs. Okay. <laughs> wow. Can you believe that? See what he did there? He went, like, he took, went to his archived video. He went up and then he's in the video now. This is a good, well done video, man. Kyla used to live up here. When we first moved in, this is her room. And we turned into the kids' playroom. Had a lot of fun up here. Son. Ow! Son, look at me. Ow! <laughs> Dude, this was the office the entire time we lived here. And then it was the podcast for sex in the sex in the sewer, or whatever the thing was called. Uh, one of my favorite memories in this place was Aura learned how to walk here. Oh, yeah. no way. Crazy, huh? Can I have it? Look who that is, right there. On purpose, by the way. On purpose. Oscar's showing you something on purpose here. So this is like, this goes way deeper than you think. This isn't snarking. Oscar's doing that on purpose to show Kira, look at this person that was here from the moment our daughter took steps. You hurt this other person, not just me and our family, but this woman here who probably raised your kids more than Kira did. That's gotta be the, that's so heartbreaking. Hannah over there, if she knew who Kira really was, you know, seven years later, or whatever this is, or five, if she knew who Kira was like five, four years later, right? That's so effing heartbreaking. And he's doing that on purpose. And good for you, Oscar. <laughs> Dude, Levi's room. Levi's room has its own story. Who remembers when uh, this wall was the dinosaur wall? You can even still see the outlines of it. That's cool, man. <laughs> oh, and he was so mad. He wanted a new wall because he outgrew it. And he was so mad at that when I painted it white. Cause he oh, so sad. And it's so sad because it's the kids, guys. It's the kids. It's the kids, man. These kids are going to grow up. And their shit's all over the internet. And they're going to grow up and know that their mom went to Vegas to have a threesome with their dad's friend and their mom's friend and their nanny's husband. Like, this is with them forever. The shame, and it shouldn't be, but it's with them. This is bullshit, man. I hope these guys are done long before these kids get to high school or are old enough to understand any of this. Really, truly. Truly. He thought it was going to be like a different cool art piece. Aww. Like, oh, no, he's old enough now. Let's just paint it white and give him like a proper room. <laughs> so sad. Oh. <Aww. laughs> every little girl's room, every single one of my little girls, at one point, this was their room. Daddy gets in the room, sure he knows the drill. You look so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, this room actually does make me sad. Oh, that's, this room is sad. I didn't think I'd be sad about anything. Oh. I don't know why this one. Oh, crap. Oh. I forgot about this. All the cute memories. Look it. <laughs> oh my god, who remembers Sydney? Sydney's on here. <laughs> <laughs> Must be an Annie or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kira's laugh ruins everything. Karen, Kiki, oh, dude. Uh, it's like a board of Kira's, like, ex-friends and shit. Oh, Alyssa's oh, my here. God. If you guys are wondering why everybody's on Team Oscar, it's because, like, this is so effing sad. And again, I think, I, you know what, I'm almost relieved still that there's still humanity left. Because there are still people commenting on like, hey, it happens, you know, if you're not happy, then just cheat. Cheat. Some people honestly believe what Kira did is okay. It's just, you know, because we serve self. That's where we've come as a human species right now. It's all about, if it doesn't make you happy, blah, 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 you, 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 me, 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 I, 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 slay queen. That's all it's all been. And thank God it's not. Thank God there are still people out there who hold moral value. Man, that makes me feel still like there's still hope in humanity, which there isn't. We know there isn't. But that really, really, it really, the people who like, who come on these things, oh, it is what it is. You're, you don't get over this and they leave for positive comments and shit. I'm sorry. Don't enable this type of behavior because that's karma that's coming back to bite you on the ass someday. Damn, this is a history board. <laughs> 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 
Not friends with them anymore. Definitely we're all friends and everybody got along, dude. Ouch. This is a video. This is Oscar's middle finger to Kira. That's what this video is. And she deserves it. How sad is that? Good old times. Yeah. Even the person behind the camera is like, Kira. <laughs> Man, a lot of good times happening here, but I just have some trauma in this place. So. <laughs> a lot of... <laughs> I don't know, this what is that? This is the master bedroom. Trauma in your master bedroom. Fights. Did you catch her doing something? Again, when Oscar and her sat down, and maybe someday he'll come out with it. I don't know. I don't know. But when Oscar sat down and said something about, like, caught her doing something, even if it wasn't physical, like, I'm thinking it probably had to do with this bedroom. This is the one room I am glad to be out of. What <laughs> craziness happened to hear that? <laughs> this video, again, guys, this is really, really, really... Oscar... You gotta, you gotta dig deeper to find out what he's actually trying to say to you, and he's actually really intelligent the way he does it. But he did, he meant what he said there. Anyways, yeah, this bathroom. Dude, look at this dream bathroom. I know. Like when I bought this house, I was thinking, oh my god, a freestanding bathtub. Like, damn, we made it. A walk-in shower, we made it. <laughs> dude, we did a shower. Yeah, we got a shower. Yeah, I was really proud of being able to get a shower like this, bathroom like that. That was cool. I mean, if anything, this guy is super grateful for what he did. Unfortunately, we can't, we can't miss it. Shit's built off the back of exploitation. I think Oscar realizes that. And I think that in the end, if anybody's going to apologize to their kids about what they did to them, it's going to be him first. And then it probably never will be Kira. If anything, Kira's going to double down on, uh, on exploiting the children, and he won't. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all the great family memories are made in the living room, right? Like, a lot of stuff happens. Christmas happened here. Friends... Coming over and hanging out. Look at that. Can't even hang out with your friends and making a damn freaking post about it. What a sad existence. What a sad... Look at them all holding up their phones. Just sad. Can we go back a bit, please? Can we just... Can we go back? Man. I'm so sad that my children will not be able to experience a childhood without, like, internet and social media and the pressures that we have as a modern-day society. I'm so sad my kids won't get to experience that. And like, just being friends, playing games and all that. Like, a lot of those great memories happened in this living room. Oh, dude, one of my all-time favorite moments was when Robert Winter and Alyssa, I think they were here for like a month. Oh, so this is Winter, I guess? And they aren't friends anymore and... <coughs> and we all just hung out and took pictures with the kids here on this couch that we used to have. That was cool. Oh. <laughs> And uh, also, I found out Kira was pregnant with Avery in his room. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, we keep talking. Much. Are you serious? So serious. Holy. She uh, was the video. She told me, I was like, damn, no way. <laughs> Again, what a sad existence that you share with the internet every waking moment, every pregnancy test, every hospital visit, every fight, every everything. And then all of a sudden she's like, nah, I don't want to share this other thing with you. Kira, you're, and I'm, I'm, you know what? Whatever. Because I don't want them to share anything to begin with. But at the same time, you don't get it both ways there, girl. <laughs> Great memory, dude. <laughs> wow. I spent the majority of my time in this kitchen once I started eating healthy. So for like the last two-ish years, this is where 90% of my days went. I was cooking, eating, doing something, hanging out, either... Maybe Here's Hannah again. Food or working on the table over here because I had easy access to food. Yeah, this is also like the recording office, huh? Yeah, this is where we so, so we recorded our breakup video. That's nice. Recorded all. Oh, this is where we went public with our breakup too. <laughs> but a game room area had a huge sick bar right here with a little like giant uh, what is it called like projector right here like a screen so that we could project movies and just have this be like the hangout spot. I'm, I'm buttered about that. One of the best memories was uh, riding Healy's. Hannah and I rode Healy's down here. Dude. Oh, yeah, I remember that video. Yeah, yeah. You know why he's showing you this video, right? Because upstairs, Preston and Hannah were texting each other and got caught on camera doing it. Allegedly. I mean, we. Everybody thinks so, anyway. Oh, she's a pro. Hey, but I. This is memories with Hannah. Why did you look at her? Why did Oh, this room. Yeah. For some reason, I call this my recovery. It's almost like. I know everybody's like, it's a Hollywood thing. 
they probably need to get together. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, just saying. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? I was never ever down here, but the minute everything went down and I came down here, it just felt nice to have my own space separated from like the rest of the world. It felt like. So he's telling you when he when shit went down and she told she basically said we're breaking up. You live in the basement now. I'm gonna stay here and we're gonna stay friends, right? And then probably shit started coming out. Because she's probably taking off a little bit more, going out a little bit more, you know what I'm saying? And he starts discovering. And so, yeah, I grew to appreciate this room a lot. This is the recovery room. Well, good morning, guys. It's uh, 2.40 in the a.m. and I can't sleep. Now, this room is sick. This was the guest room where, like, we had, what, two Murphy beds so that we could fit three people or two people and then one person up here. That was cool. I love the way they designed this. That's pretty sweet, not gonna lie. We're leaving that for the new owner because that's a sick piece. Holy shit. <laughs> oh. oh, this thing is heavy. I hope Kira's name fell off. Burn. <sighs> Didn't Preston get this? I'd burn this shit on a pile of poo. Get rid of Kira. Just put Oscar. That's so sad. This is it. It doesn't even feel like the same people at the sign up, huh? Without the bad times, the good times wouldn't feel so good, so it's an experience. It's a good experience. No, man. Shit's not a good experience. I know he's trying to be positive, but that shit's that's that's heartbreaking. Yes! He's already lit. Hey dear Sissy. Yeah, he threw a picture of what's her face in there, Karen too. This is all on purpose, everybody. <laughs> And it's sad because, you know, in the end, it was just like, did it really need to go down? Somebody just, I guess so. I guess it's probably better off if you think about it. Oscar, you're better off. You're young. Move on with your life. Find someone that loves you. Treat you better. That you can live the right life with. That you can do the things you want to do with. Unfortunately, in the end, you're attached to Kira for the rest of your life because you're kids. But you know what? You got to give him props because in the end, there's people who go through divorces that are really dirty and nasty and like, they'll, they'll, turn your kids against you and everything else. It gets really gross. And they, these, you gotta give them both props. They're both not doing that. And Oscar, you know, wanted to give her the big middle finger and he did it with class. He just did it with like, look what you threw away. Look what you don't have anymore. You know? And in the end, all you have is lies. All you are left with are the lies that you need to live inside. And it, even if Kira, if Kira is not, does, never tells us the truth, it doesn't matter. She has to live inside of the lies that she's built. And Oscar is going to move on to bigger and better things. The kids are going to wake up one day and realize their mom's a piece of shit. And that really sucks for both of them. Because she made these shitty choices and whatever. But it really sucks more for Oscar and it sucks the most for the kids. But you got to live with all this, Kira. The more I see it, the more I'm going to go back to what I said before. Preston gave her an ultimatum. You tell people, get this shit over with, I'm done. Or I'm moving on. And so she was forced to do this. While laying in bed crying. And then said, here, the remote's waiting. I'm still here. I told everybody, like you said, that's, that's what I'm thinking. But again, everything that's built on lies, that shit's going to come back to haunt you for the rest of your life. I've, I've seen this comment a hundred times in the Oscar and Kira fiasco. And I'm paraphrasing. It's like, they're gone the way that you get them. Or they leave the same way you got them. Or something like that. People like this aren't going to be happy. If you, if you left your wife for your friend who has a family, there's just there's no excuse for that. That is a 
bullshit, coward thing to do, Preston. You're a dickhole. And Kira, when you throw your family away for strange taint and take away from someone you said was your best friend, her damned husband, and then lie about it on the internet when we can easily prove it that you that you're lying? This it's people only look, again, I'll say it again. I'm so th thank God people still people can still think this way and think that what you do when you do shit like this that it's wrong. Thank God. Anyway, that was a it wasn't very snarky, but it was very real. And again, one more important reason to cover these types of things is because a lot of these family vloggers, and I mean probably most of them, this is their relationship. But they stay together for business because the money matters more than anything. Again, at least Oscar gets to move on. Time will heal, and he'll, get, he'll do bigger and better things. And Kira's hair is just continuing to do what it does. All right, everybody take a deep breath with me. You're going to need it. <sighs> you know, we've been covering a lot of people on, these, on this channel for a little over two years. And rarely do I feel anything for these people. Rarely. But sometimes you got you to, gotta, it hits you. It hits you. It's these kids, man. All of these kids are going to suffer through this bullshit. I did a video yesterday about... Showing your teen this video and I did an open letter to two of these girls that are just gonna have their whole lives destroyed on the internet And I've seen so many comments of these amazing moms in my comments saying all I want to do is hug these children that you talk about All I want to do is hug them and tell them that it's gonna be okay that you're safe because their parents don't do it for them And that is the most heartbreaking thing about this whole endeavor we're taking here that these kids don't actually get loving families What you see on camera is not true and that's bullshit but you guys are amazing, incredible, and valuable. Don't you forget it. And I will see you tomorrow.